Hey hey, Marcus House with you here, and today I think it's about time we delve into SpaceX's upcoming Crew Dragon demo flight, which is then of course followed by the manned flights coming up shortly thereafter this year. And there's a lot to cover here, not only with the missions themselves, but also on the astronauts scheduled to fly that historic first mission. We'll also explore some of the awesome safety systems incorporated into Crew Dragon and get a little more in depth about why SpaceX are not planning on actually reusing these vessels more than once for crewed NASA missions. Now there are plenty of other amazing SpaceX milestones coming up for the year and if you want a great summary of this please do check out my video from a few weeks ago on that. There'll be a little tile at the end of the video here to watch this and it covers not only some information on Crew Dragon but also Falcon Heavy, the Starhopper prototype rocket and the elusive capture of the Falcon 9 fairings. Now I've got some more exciting SpaceX topics like this coming up as well, so do remember to hit that subscribe button and bell to get notified. For now, let's rip into this topic and explore the amazing Crew Dragon by asking that initial question. Why does NASA need SpaceX for crewed space flights anyway? Now currently all US astronauts are required to hitch a ride on Russian Soyuz rockets launching from Kazakhstan. In fact, we haven't seen crewed rockets launch from the US since the very last space shuttle mission in July 2011. Now you may wonder why the space shuttle flights actually ended in the first place. Now, I won't cover this in depth in this video as we could spend a great deal of time diving right into this topic alone, but the short story here is that the shuttle, as cool as it was, was simply too expensive. And the shuttle sadly never met its promise for low cost access to space. And with the bad taste left from both the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster in 1986 and the Columbia disaster in 2003, the justification to keep the program running at such a high risk and cost simply became unsustainable. In comparison, launching from Russia was simply much more affordable, and the Soyuz is a very reliable, safe rocket. In terms of cost, it worked out much more affordable than the space shuttle flights while new vehicles were being developed. NASA, of course, never wanted this reliance on Russian vehicles indefinitely and created a partnership with both Boeing and SpaceX called the Commercial Crew Program to develop spacecraft meant to transport crew. Now 2019 is the year for this very important milestone which will allow NASA to finally send humans into space again from American soil. This will of course be accomplished both with SpaceX's Crew Dragon vessel atop the Falcon 9 rocket and the Boeing Starliner which is currently in preparation to be launched with an Atlas V rocket. SpaceX are now in their final preparations to launch first an initial demo flight using their new Crew Dragon vessel without crew on board and then afterwards a crewed mission to the International Space Station. Now for those of you that have been following this topic closely, you would be more than aware of the several delays to Crew Dragon that have occurred so far. NASA released a statement on January 10th saying, NASA and SpaceX are continuing to work on the activities leading towards the Demo-1 uncrewed flight test to the International Space Station. NASA and SpaceX are now targeting no earlier than February for the launch of Demo-1 to complete hardware testing and joint reviews. NASA and SpaceX will confirm a new target date after coordination with the Eastern Range and the International Space Station program. Now, I would suspect that NASA have been quite severely impacted by the recent government shutdown as they, among many other government agencies, were running at a super low capacity, just enough apparently to keep critical systems operational. Now, just days after NASA's statement, Elon Musk tweeted an update saying that if the test flight of Dragon goes well next month, NASA astronauts will fly to the space station this summer. <laughs> That's assuming that I've translated all these emojis here correctly. Now, since then we have seen a few hints that the launch may not occur now until early March. As with anything of this complexity, everything needs to line up perfectly, and it is certainly not unusual for these dates to slip back. That being said, we all have our fingers crossed that we are going to see Crew Dragon launch within the next month or so. This is exciting stuff, as we should see a crewed flight by SpaceX happening mid-year, assuming the upcoming demo flight goes to plan. 
Speaking of the upcoming demo flight, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket carrying Crew Dragon fired up its nine first stage engines briefly on Thursday the 24th of January from historic launch pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral. The very same launch complex of course used by NASA's Saturn V moon rockets and space shuttles. A cloud of rocket exhaust erupted from the flame trench of the launch pad as the Merlin engines fired and throttled up for a burn that was expected to last around 7 seconds or so. Now the rocket in this static fire test is actually anchored to the ground by hold down clamps. Now this test was not to launch anything, just to run a range of tests on the rocket engines and launch systems. This is essentially done before any of the SpaceX rocket launches. So once static fire is completed successfully, the actual live launch is generally announced very soon after. Now there was a little concern right after the static fire test as multiple sources claimed the test firing cut off before reaching the full planned duration. Nevertheless, shortly after, SpaceX declared the test a success, tweeting, Static fire test complete, targeting February launch from historic launch complex 39A for Crew Dragon's first demonstration flight. Again, this date is likely to have now slipped back a little, but the successful test cleared the way for the rocket to be lowered back down horizontally and transported back to the hangar for final checks and preparations for liftoff in the upcoming demo flight. The Crew Dragon's Demo-1 mission will launch aboard the Falcon 9 rocket into low Earth orbit and rendezvous with the International Space Station which travels roughly 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The Crew Dragon vessel will then move in and complete an automated docking sequence with the station. Now most of this process is certainly not new for SpaceX. The current Cargo Dragon capsule has already delivered 15 cargo missions to the International Space Station right from the CRS-1 mission through to the CRS-16 mission. Of course, sadly, the CRS-7 mission failed to make it to orbit when it disintegrated after the failure of a strut. Now, this strut essentially secured a high-pressure helium bottle in the second stage's liquid oxygen tank, which after coming loose exploded, causing the vessel to break apart just before stage separation. Now SpaceX's existing Cargo Dragon capsules are grappled by the station's robotic arm and then berthed with the space station. The new Crew Dragon, however, will dock autonomously without the robotic arm, similar to the Russian Soyuz capsules. As with any flight, these first few missions are super important. The new Crew Dragon vessel needs thorough testing, especially around the new systems such as life support, crew accommodations, propulsion, electrical and thermal control. Many of these systems haven't been required on the Cargo Dragon vehicles, or were at least previously very different. The solar systems themselves are very different from the Dragon cargo vessel which has solar arrays that open up in orbit. Now the Crew Dragon doesn't use any of these at all and you can see here the solar panels on Crew Dragon are formed to match the shape of the ship itself, meaning that the spacecraft won't have to deploy external solar arrays to gather sunlight. After arriving at the station a day or two after liftoff, the Crew Dragon vessel will then undock, do a small retrograde burn to drop back into the atmosphere, re-enter and splash down safely in the ocean using its parachute systems. Back in August 2018, NASA announced the first nine astronauts who will ride on both the SpaceX and Boeing vehicles. If all currently goes to plan, then the first two people to fly in SpaceX's Crew Dragon will be Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley. Both Bob and Doug flew previously on NASA's Space Shuttle, but this vessel is a very different ballgame. In this case, Crew Dragon is SpaceX's vehicle, meaning that SpaceX is responsible for training them how to use the vessel. SpaceX has of course created state-of-the-art simulators to prepare the astronauts for many mission scenarios. Now, these simulations are essentially created to be near identical to the real capsule. The controls themselves are futuristic and clean, and this looks to be a much simpler interface when compared to the massive number of controls that we've seen in the past from vehicles such as the Space Shuttle. The mission to the International Space Station with SpaceX should not need a great deal of input from the astronauts unless, of course, there's an issue of some sort that's out of the ordinary. A nominal mission should largely be automated right through from the launch to docking at the station. 
so all the required controls are mainly there just in case they are needed when things don't go to plan. Of course, this is what the training is all about, going over every part of the mission that could go wrong and teaching the crew how to hop back on the controls to fix any unforeseen problems. Safety of the crew doesn't stop with training as the emergency systems built into the Crew Dragon vehicle are very impressive. The Crew Dragon vehicle is capable of safely aborting a problematic launch and carrying the astronauts to safety throughout the entire flight. This would not only save the very expensive capsule from destruction in an unmanned flight, but would of course save the lives of any on board in a crewed mission. Now you can see this in the pad abort test done by SpaceX back in 2015. The description here tells us that in this test, the vehicle traveled from zero to 100 miles per hour in 1.2 seconds and reached a maximum velocity of 345 miles per hour. This system is quite different to a launch abort system like what we saw on the Saturn V, which was carried on top of the vehicle and jettisoned during the flight to orbit. The configuration of the Crew Dragon here instead provides escape capability from the launch pad all the way to orbit. I mean, you can really get a feel for the massive thrust to weight ratio the Crew Dragon here has as the rockets fire off the pad. Just incredible. Now, interestingly, these exact same systems can also be used for touching down propulsively without the need for parachutes. In fact, SpaceX originally had the intention of using only these propulsive systems to land the capsule after vessel re-entry, rather than a standard parachute mechanism. However, NASA is at this point at least unwilling to allow SpaceX to do this on crewed flights. I think in the future, after many launches and tests, this propulsive form of landing would be fantastic as it allows the capsule to touch down on a landing pad and it would make for a much more comfortable touchdown for the crew in comparison to a typical splash down in the ocean. These systems have been trialled back in 2016 in the Dragon 2 propulsive hover test as we see here. A snippet from the description of this video tells us that in the test the eight Super Draco engines executed a picture perfect propulsive hover test at SpaceX's rocket development facility. Now you can see in this design the eight Super Draco thrusters positioned around the perimeter of the vehicle in pairs. They all fire up simultaneously to raise the Crew Dragon vessel very precisely for a five second hover test before returning the vehicle to its resting position. Now the accuracy in this test is just nuts. In fact, I think just for kicks, we could reverse the footage on the pad abort test to experience what this would be like to touch down propulsively. Now this is so cool. Back in August 2018, we discovered that SpaceX had chosen against reusing its upgraded Crew Dragon spaceships on NASA's commercial crew program launches. Now, NASA itself explicitly provided SpaceX the option to propose reflights of crew capsules. At a NASA advisory council meeting, it was specifically stated that SpaceX had proposed a new vehicle for every flight for NASA. Now, because SpaceX already routinely reuse cargo dragons along with reflying Falcon 9 rocket boosters, this seems quite counterintuitive. Now, I suspect there is a lot more to this decision than meets the eye. News in 2018 regarding SpaceX's next commercial resupply services hints at NASA preferring cargo delivery to be performed using slightly modified Crew Dragon vessels rather than the existing cargo Dragon vessels used in the previous resupply missions. Now this could well mean that SpaceX simply intends to build up a new fleet of Crew Dragon capsules to replace the existing Cargo Dragon vehicle. Now this makes sense of course as it is easier to support and manufacture one product rather than needing to support the two different Dragon vehicles. I also think that this decision to use brand new Crew Dragons for each NASA mission may well mean they intend to reuse the vehicles in some other way as well. Perhaps we'll soon get an announcement about some tourist missions. I mean, how cool would that be? This is all speculation, of course, and I'd love to know what you think about this particular topic as I've not found a great deal of information around this. If you have any thoughts, do let me know in the comments below. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you're new to my channel, you may be interested in my video from the other week talking about the amazing SpaceX milestones we expect to see throughout 2019. 
If you are interested in simulations of the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, I've made a bunch here on the channel so check those out as well. We also have a growing group of SpaceX enthusiasts on my Discord channel. There is a link in the description so if you love these topics as much as I do, please do get in touch over Discord. If you have any questions for me about this video or for me in general, please do shoot them down to me in the comments below. If this video has earned your subscription, a huge welcome to the channel and for all my existing subscribers, a massive thank you to you for all your awesome support. I could not do this without you guys, so thank you, thank you. In the tile in the bottom left, we have the SpaceX milestones we expect to see throughout 2019 video. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.